Hi everybody, Rick Poljan with M Heart Fastening Technologies. Along with our distributor, High Tech Fasteners, we're developing a series of how-to videos on how best to set up and maintain your new pop rivet tool. In our rivet size conversion video, we discuss changing from a 3 16 diameter rivet to a 1 8 diameter rivet. We will now discuss properly cleaning the front end of the tools, which shares many of the same steps. The first step is to take and remove the nose housing of the tool. Once the nose housing is removed, we remove the jaw casing and jaws from the tool. Again, we talked about the snap collar. We pull back the snap collar, disengaging it from the ears in the jaw housing. I unscrew it by hand. Again, the nice feature about this 2500 tool is that there are no tools required to do this normal jaw maintenance. I think it's important right now that we talk about also the fact that this maintenance cleaning procedure is recommended to be done every 5,000 rivet sets. So that could be once a day or, or twice a day, depending on the number of rivets that you're using in your plant, or it could be once a week. This cleaning procedure is the most important thing you can do to make sure that your tool runs correctly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dump the jaws out of the jaw housing onto this piece of paper I have here. You see there's a little bit of grease and they stuck together. You'll notice that, that inside the grease, there's also a rough texture. What you get is every time you set a rivet, you're pulling some nail, some metal off the nail of the rivet, and it forms a, a thick dust that causes the jaws to lock up. So the first step is going to be to, to take and clean the th jaws th thoroughly using a rag. Uh, some contact cleaner or degreaser may also be used here. In this particular case, this tool is fairly new and they're not real dirty, so I'm just going to use the rag to clean up the jaw completely. So you'll see there that the jaw is, is cleaned out. It may be hard to see, but inside that jaw there's a set of serrations. Those serrations are what actually grabs the rivet. Sometimes those serrations can be clogged with the metal we discussed. I like to take a small wire brush and wire brush the, the jaw to clean out any remaining metal that may be stuck inside of the serrations of the tool. Make sure you get a nice sharp grip on the rivet nail when you set the rivet. If it's not a nice sharp grip, the jaws can slip on the nail, making the, the effect of a short stroke tool and not setting the rivet with one pull of the rivet. So if you run into to a problem where you pull the trigger of the tool and it doesn't set the rivet, you have to pull it twice, the first place I'd go is check the jaws. Are they clean? Are the serrations clean? And, and is it gripping the rivet pro properly? So now I'm just going to go through and I'm going to do the other two remaining jaws. So now with all three jaws clean, next step is I'm going to clean out the jaw housing itself. Uh, up inside of there you get the same uh, uh, metal dust and, and grease that's built up in that tool that you would that's also on the jaw. So what I like to do is just take a rag, roll it up and, and push it up into the nose housing of the tool and rotate until I can see the rag up on the nose of the tool. There's a taper in there that can act as a taper lock. If it's too dirty it won't release the jaw so it's, it needs to be cleaned up inside that tool. You can see here I'm actually working the rag out of the nose housing of the tool and running it around to make sure that that's cleaned out inside. I'm actually going to grab this small end and just pull it through a little bit. You can see from that rag, and this is a fairly new tool, the amount of, of dirt and debris that's on that rag. That's what causes those jaws not to open up and not release and not grip the nail correctly. So it's important that we make sure that that is completely clean before we put the tool back together. So now I pull it apart. If you can see up inside of there it's actually shiny and clean. That's the condition it should look when you put this tool back together. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the long mandrel guide tube and jaw pusher uh, that we discussed in a previous video putting in. So this tool is set up currently for 1 8 diameter rivets. Uh, just change this over so it's pretty clean but I'm going to make sure that, that the jaw pusher itself is clean and that I can see down the, the length of the tube make sure that's also clean in there. Sometimes we can get material that, that's built in up in there. We take a small spray can with some contact cleaner or degreaser and clean the, the tube out if it is plugged. In this case, it's pretty clean right now. Uh, next up, I want to take and put the jaws back into the tool. I think you'll notice that, that it's very important that the serrations of the tool go towards the center and that the jaws are, all three of them, in there correctly. I'm kind of going to put it together here wrong to show you how tough it can be. So I drop the jaws in. They are all pointing in the right direction. When I tip the housing over, they'll fall out and, and can go in different directions. It's really important in this step that we add a little bit of grease to the jaws, one that keep the jaws moving freely, and it helps them to stick in the, the assembly. And when I think about a little bit, I'm a very little bit. I'm just going to put a dab on the back side of the jaw, which will help it stick there in the jaw housing. So now when I place it in there, it stays in place, and I know I can look at it and make sure that I've got the proper alignment on the jaws when I put it back together. Again, on the second piece, I'm just going to put a little more dab of grease 
on the back side of that jaw. Again, just a little light covering of grease. Drop it into the assembly. You can see that it's in there correctly in the right way. And again, with the last piece, I got enough grease left on my finger to be able to do that. I'm going to drop it into place. So now I'm just going to use the back side of this manual guide tube to tap them down tight into the assembly. And if you can see that, you can see that all the jaws, the serrations are facing the inside. There's actually a small chamfer on the side of that jaw so you can see that it's, it's properly placed into the jaw housing. So now that the jaws are in there greased and cleaned, I'm going to take and install back in the long mandrel guide tube and jaw pusher into the tool. Again, I'm going to take and make sure there's a spring force fighting against you. I'm going to make sure that moves freely and clearly in the tool uh, before I assemble the jaws to the part. I'm going to take and put the nose housing or jaw carrier back on. Again, fighting spring force here, but I'm going to line it. It can be a little bit tricky. Make sure it starts, make sure it screws down freely. Important part to notice, and we noticed this, uh, noted this before in a previous video, I'm going to tighten it down until I hear a slight click. Okay, you heard a slight click. Now I'm going to pull back the release mechanism, let it go, and then turn it until I hear an audible click right there. Now that's locked into place. It's very important during this phase that we don't take and crank the front end of the nose housing all the way down tight. If I crank it down tight like that, the jaws aren't going to move back and forth properly and not going to release the nail in the assembly when I go to, to set the rivet. So again, I'm going to back it off. I'm going to go until I hear a slight click. Right there, I'm going to pull the housing back, let it re-engage with the spring force, and turn it until I hear a loud, audible click. There you go. Tool's locked into place. Last step is I'm going to take and put the nose housing back on the tool. This part normally won't get as dirty as the, the jaw casing itself and the jaws, but it's always good to take a second to wipe it out with a rag. So I'm just going to stick the rag up inside the tool and, and, and run it around a couple of times to make sure that it's clean up in that portion of the tool. Complete the process by tightening down the nose housing. You'll notice that as you tighten it down, you're going to fight the spring force of the jaws against the front of the nose piece and the O-ring that's on the back of the tool that keeps it from loosening up. So I'm going to go down until I start to feel the force, and then I'm going to have to crank it a little bit to make sure it's tight. I'm going to go until it stops, but not so tight that I have to get a pair of vice grips or channel locks to loosen up the tool. So now that we've cleaned this rivet tool completely on the front end uh, nose housing, we, we took the jaws out, we cleaned them, we wire brushed them, we greased them, we put, put them back together. Remembering we're going to do that every 5,000 rivet cycles. In between that time, uh, every four or 500 rivets, we do, when you send in your registration card, send out a free can of jaw lube. These canceled jaw lubes are also available at our industrial distributors. So in between that, every three, four, 500 pieces, we recommend this as a cleaning procedure to, to also extend that period by which you would have to go through and pull the tool apart and clean it. Jaw lube can opens, and what you have is a real light oil. So to, to perform this procedure, we remove the vacuum recovery canister for the mandrels. Very important because if you leave this, leave this on, you're going to suck all this uh, jaw cleaning fluid back into the tool and cause a mess. So always make sure you remove that from the tool. We're going to turn the air supply back onto the tool. I'm going to take the nose of the tool and I'm just going to dip it down into the oil so that the nose tip is submerged in there. And I'm going to cycle the tool six or seven times in the oil. That procedure will flush out some of those loose chips and, and gunk that we just went through and cleaned out. Uh, if you remember the rag that we had here, the, the dirt that was collected up inside the tool, that's going to help flush some of that out of the tool in between your regular scheduled cleaning. So this can of jaw lube can be very valuable in extending that period. We still recommend every 5,000 pieces, but if you want to run clean through those 5,000 pieces, this quick procedure can be set right there at your assembly bench. So really that's the, the jaw cleaning procedure. My experience, 80% of the problems with this tools are right up here in the front end of the tool. Dirty jaws, worn jaws, or not properly assembled jaws. If you can go through that cleaning procedure once every 5,000 rivet sets, you're going to go a long way towards making this a reliable tool that will run a long time. Good. If you found this video helpful, consider using an MHART authorized distributor like high-tech fasteners for your fastener and tooling requirements.